Hello and welcome back to data structures in JavaScript. Today we will be covering hash tables. What are they? Why are they useful? And how do we implement them? A hash table is a data structure that uses hashing to implement associative arrays or mappings of key value pairs. In different programming languages, these might be called dictionaries or maps or hashes, but in JavaScript, an object can act as an associative array. There is also a data structure introduced in ES 2015 called a map, which, like an object, stores key value pairs, but also remembers the original insertion order of the keys. To understand a hash table, we should first understand the concept of hashing. Hashing is used not only in data structures, but also has applications in security, cryptography, and even graphics. To visualize the idea of hashing, think about how it applies to cooking. If you wanted to make a hash brown, you would have a raw ingredient, a potato, and chop it up and mix it and cook it, and in the end, your output is a hash brown. In computing, an example input could be a password, which you run through a hash function, which results in a small shortened reference generated from that original data. This could be a string of letters and numbers or simply an integer. Hash functions are typically irreversible. They are one way. You shouldn't be able to take the result of a hash function, feed it through another function, and then get the original data back. Hash functions are also deterministic. If you take an input and feed it through the hash function over and over and over again, you should expect the same result each time. However, it is possible for two different inputs to return the same hash result. This is called a collision. One way to handle collisions is to just store both key value pairs at that same index using some other collection like an array or a linked list. This technique to manage collisions is called separate chaining. So the ability to use hashing is integral to the hash table data structure. We can use the result of the hash function, the hash value, to get to a certain location and access a reference to the original data. A hash table begins with multiple placeholders called buckets that will hold content, and they're often set with an initial max capacity. To add in a key value pair to the hash table, we take a key and pass it through the hash function, which outputs a number that corresponds to an index in an array where we will store the value. To retrieve an item from the hash table, we take a key, run it through that same exact hash function, and then directly access that bucket in the array where the value is stored. This is a huge advantage of the hash table. There's no traversing a list. It's direct access no matter how large the hash table gets. It's a very efficient way to look up entries and add them. Now let's take a look at implementing the hash table. At its core, a hash table is an array-based data structure, but with some added functionality. So let's begin with the hash function. I'm just gonna use a pretty common example. So we've got a const hash, which takes in a key and a size, and we'll return a hashed key. So let's let hashed key equal zero. So the parameters here, the key is of type string, and then the size will be of type number, or i is zero. We're going to add to the hashed key the char code at the key at index i. Finally, we'll return the hashed key modulo the size. Next, let's scaffold out our hash table class. So we've got a class hash table and our constructor. Our constructor will have a size property. So this.size and we'll set it to 20 and this.buckets, which is an array filled with 20 buckets. So this.size. So we learned earlier that hash tables can manage collisions by storing other collections in each of its buckets. So we have a lot of options here. We can choose to store more arrays or linked lists, but I want to try using the ES6 maps. I literally just learned this today, so I'm pretty excited. They're really cool and they do a lot of the work for you. So let's populate each of the buckets with a map. And then we'll move on to our methods. So I want an insert, remove 
and search. So our insert function will take a key and a value and to get the index of the array to store our value at, we want to hash the key. So let idx equal hash key and this.size. Next we'll access the bucket at that index. So this dot buckets at idx dot set key value. Now set is actually a built-in method on the map data structure. Moving on to remove, we'll take a key as a parameter, and we're essentially doing the same thing. I'm just gonna copy paste this line of code because we're also hashing the key to get to an index. Next, we'll store the value that we're going to delete in a variable. So let deleted equal this.buckets at idx dot get key. So once again, get is a built-in method on the map data structure. We'll return deleted, and then of course we have to actually delete that item. So this dot buckets at idx dot delete key. And delete is yet another built-in map method. Finally, we'll search for a key, and then again, we're going to let idx equal hash the key and this dot size. We're going to simply return this dot buckets at that index dot get the key. Now let's test it. So const hash table equals new hash table. So when I was growing up, I was really into this anime Sailor Moon. So I was thinking we could populate our hash table with the Sailor Scouts civilian identities mapped to their alter egos. So let's hash table dot insert Serena and the moon will hash table dot insert Amy, the Sailor Mercury, insert Ray, the Sailor Mars. Lita Jupiter, Mina Venus, and Darian Tuxedo Mask. Let's peek at our hash table. So we see our hash table class, which has a size of 20, and you can see in each of its buckets there is a map object. It seems that a collision has occurred. So Serena, Moon, Lita, Jupiter, and Mina Venus have all mapped to index 17, and three of the other characters have their own bucket. But somehow, these three have collided. But it was okay because the map data structure collected all of those key value pairs. Now we'll do a search. So hash table dot search. Let's search for Ray. We should expect this to return Mars. Sweet. Now let's hash table dot search Lita, which returns Jupiter. Just to be sure. Nice. So even though we search for Lita, who is in a bucket that had a collision in it, this still returned the correct value of Jupiter. So our hash table seems to be working well. Let's search for Serena and we receive the moon. So, excellent, let's move on to deleting. So let's remove Darian. That returns his value, tuxedo mask. Let's remove Mina, who was in one of the collision buckets. Returns Venus. And then let's look at our hash table once more. So only four characters are left. Mina was removed from the bucket with the collision in it, and our hash table works. In summary, we learned that hash tables are data structures that use hashing to implement an associative array or mappings of key value pairs. Internally, the backbone of a hash table is a regular array, but it can use other collections such as linked lists, arrays, maps, or even other hash tables to manage collisions. 
Their primary benefit is that they are extremely fast at accessing, inserting, and deleting values. Finally, we looked at implementing a super simple hash table using JavaScript ES6 classes and maps. And that concludes today's video on hash tables. This is part of a series on data structures, so please subscribe so you don't miss the next one, and leave a like if you found it helpful. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. You mean you've never heard the story of the hash slinging slasher? The slash bringing hasher? The hash slinging slasher. The slash ringing, the trash slinging, mash slinging, the flash slinging, ringing, the, the crash slinging.